Welcome to another edition of the Show Me Hoops podcast. We're the number one basketball podcast in the state of Missouri, which means we're probably number one in the whole doggone country by this point. And I'm joined by my good friend, Lucas Nutt. Coach, how you doing? And where are you at these days? Man, I'm doing great, Coach. Uh, I'm currently in Florida right now. Uh, I've been kind of bouncing all over the place uh, trying to figure it out. And You know, I think in the end I'll probably end up trying to come back to the game. But, uh, man, I've enjoyed it. It's been uh you know, a good experience for me and everything. But, yeah, right now I'm currently in Florida and um, in a debate to move to Oklahoma or Missouri. So <laughs> you can kind I of support you. that right now. Yeah. But, uh, either either way, uh, the weather's not going to be as nice. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, I, I do believe that. I believe that. But, man, you know, it's hard to beat the boot heel, and um, Arkansas is always beautiful. But, uh yeah, Coach, I'm, right now I'm just in Florida, and uh, I'm actually right now at the moment with my dad, and I've been with him for a couple of weeks, and it's been good for me to be able to be, you know, get some time with him and watch Florida State play a little bit, and, you know, it's just, you know, good quality time, Coach, and I think yeah. I'm about to go, you know, take yeah. another job in Oklahoma, so it just never stops. I'm all over the place, so. And for our listeners who who have not put two and two together yet, your your father, Dickie Nutt, uh, a legend in the midwestern part of the United States of America, where he was the head coach at Arkansas State, and he was also the head coach at Southeast Missouri State for years and years. And uh, I, you know, I've known your dad for a long time, and uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but when I was 12 years old, I went to uh, Arkansas State University's camp in the summer. And yeah. at the end of camp, they give away the Indian Award and for the best player in that age group. And I had a great week at camp, uh, Lucas. Let me tell you, I had a good week. And so <laughs> at the it. end of the week, your dad called me down, and I got this pair of old red nylon Indian Award shorts with the screen print on those shorts. You've probably seen a pair of them. You know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> yes, I, kept, I, do. I I kept those shorts forever and ever and ever. And I was like, I got a pair of these from Coach Nut. I felt like I had really done something. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's awesome, though. That was a, that was a fun camp, man. Uh, those A-State camps were, we, you know, there were some good times back, back in that day. Uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, a couple breaks here and there. You never, you know, you never know what could have happened, but, you know, that's that's part of the game, Coach, and, you know, injuries are part of it, and, you know, catching breaks, you know, I I believe, you know, good teams, you know, create their own breaks, you know. That's create, right. You know, they create their own luck because, you know, you play harder, you know, good things somehow just end up happening for you, you know. But that's, that's right. Go fifty percent, you know the, those breaks, you know that you need. It's not happening, you know. And I've been a part of, you know, a team that did that, you know, when I played, and uh, I've been a part of it coaching. And uh, you know, that's a tough thing to do. If you, you know, I feel like I, I'm getting way out there in basketball land now, coach. But uh, that's okay. That's okay. Feel, that's what this is about. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, man, if you can get those kids to buy in and play hard 100% of the time, you know, you got something. I don't care, you know, what type of talent you got. I mean, you know, you have to have players, but, um, you know, if you can get guys to play hard, man, and, you know, you can rely on them to be tough every night and, you know, they're disciplined, you know, they're trained, I mean – I think that's when you know you got something, you know, good, Coach, and it's hard to do. You know, it's not it's easy. It's very hard. And, uh, and that's why, you know, when I coached, uh, in, especially in my early career when, you know, we had some good players and we had good teams, you know, I got accused a time or two of, of leaving the dogs on a little too long. You know, like we beat right. people worse than people thought I should have. But it's never that I wanted to embarrass anybody, but it's like I tried to explain to people. And it doesn't mean that I was right. I want to say that first and foremost, but my justification for it was it's so hard to get kids to play all the way, you know, 100%, like you're saying. I mean, like, honest to goodness, most teams do not. Even teams that think they're playing hard, they're taking plays off. 
Oh yeah. I'm I'm talking oh, about yeah. if you got a group of guys that are getting after it. It's so so hard to get them to that level yep. that if you ever as a head coach tell them, okay guys, stop. Stop playing hard. Yeah. Are you going to be able to get them to start again? And that was always my fear because I had seen that with one group that I coached. Mm-hmm. There was uh, actually in 2003 an experimental rule in the state of Missouri. They took away the running clock. They said, we're not going to have a mercy clock in the fourth quarter. If you start beating people real bad, we're not going to do it. So, mm-hmm. of course, scores that were already going to be lopsided now are way worse because the clock never stopped in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So with that team in particular – there was a lot of nights where I just played the JV the fourth quarter because, you know, if I let those guys in there anymore, I mean, we're a 1A school, so I only had eight on the varsity to begin with. Uh, so, you know, we're playing kids that really didn't even deserve to be in a varsity game in the fourth quarter but just to keep the score down as much as we could. But I thought that that really hurt our first eight kids that were our main kids because they got used to just playing two and a half quarters a night because we were looked at as like the quote unquote bully, you know, and uh, it really hurt our team because I, you know, and we ended up losing in the playoffs instead of winning a state title. And I think it was my fault because as a coach, I didn't, I didn't figure out how to uh, balance that between, you know, keeping my kids on that razor's edge of playing as hard as they can play all the time while at the same time, not being a jerk to the other coach and his, and his team because we were just better, you know, and so right. I was young. I think I was 23, 24. I was young, and I learned, and, and I did better after that. Yeah, and um, and it's hard to, you know, justify that because I'm with you, Coach. I mean, I uh, I think about it as like, you know, even if you're up 25 points, you know, I think about it as it, you know, as this, you know, the game is a practice, and I mean, I want my guys to go hard every possession they play, and you know, like you said, it's hard to get them to that point. And, you know, if you start to, you know, I mean, it it goes it, both ways. You know, you I, think, I think people can reasonably expect you as a head coach. They can say to you, did you sub all your players in and mm-hmm. did you stop pressing? If you did those two things, yes. if you let everybody play and you took yes. the press off, then you did everything you could do as a coach. I, you know, there was a famous uh, book that came out years ago about Arnold Ryan, who was the head coach at Puxico back in the 50s. He's the guy who was the architect of the original run and gun fast break in the Midwestern United States. That's where the Cooks and Boys played. That's where mm-hmm. the, the whole Scott County, all that stuff came from Puxico. And Arnold Ryan got accused of running the score up a lot when he was coaching, and he had a famous quote that I loved in that book. He said, I can only coach one team. You know, like he, I can't coach your team and my team. I can only worry about if we're getting better or not, you know. And I always tried to take that approach, you know, because my teams weren't always that good. And I always took that approach. I remember one night we were playing Dexter, and my good friend Daniel Sexton was coaching uh, at Dexter. It's a JV game. And they're just killing us at halftime. We're down about 25 or 30 at half. And uh, we start the second half. And, of course, they were running a 2-2-1 press or just eating our lunch. Mm -hmm. So at halftime, that's all I talked about was how to break the press because we couldn't break it. So we start the third quarter, and – I'll be danged if Daniel hadn't took the press off. So I called timeout. I swear this is a true story. I called timeout. I walked down to his huddle. You should have seen the shock on his face when he looked up and I was in their huddle. And I said, <laughs> I said, Daniel, what are you doing? Put the press back on. And he's, you know, tr- he's a nice guy. He's like, oh, David, I can't do that. And I said, no, I'm being serious. You guys, I need you to press us. Press us hard. That's the only way we're going to get better is if we learn how to break it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so he said, okay, you know, if you say – and I told him, I said, if anybody in this gym complains, I will go up in the bleachers and tell them to shut up because I'm not worried about the score. I'm worried about if we're getting better or not. Right. So he, he put the press back on. I walked down there, and, and we ended up losing by about 25 or 30. We we did a lot better in the second half. Uh-huh. So they beat us, but that group of kids went to the final four three out of four years. You know, like – so instead of crying about the score one night, I was worried about my kids getting better. Getting you know? better. And so, and so, you know, everybody who always said I was the bully beating everybody bad, hey, I've been on the other side of it too. Oh, yeah. And, and when I was on the other side of it, all I was worried about was my team and getting better because back to Arnold Ryan's quote, I can only coach one team. I can't worry about the other guy's team, you know. Right, right. And, so, and uh, Man, I agree with you, Coach. Uh, I, I'm the same way. I, I, 
I feel like, uh, you know, if we're getting, getting beat, you know, like a drum, I think the main thing we focus on, even in timeouts, is, man, work on your game. Get better. You know, whether they're pressing you or whether, you know, it's man-to-man, tough defense, you know, they're more athletic. Work on your fundamentals, you know, think about it, catch it, triple threat, snap your passes, you know, do the little things, you know. And uh, I think that's, a, you know, it's always a good learning experience. You know, I, that's the way I take it, you know, every loss. Unfortunately, I've had some bad ones. You know, we've had some, you know, good wins, but, uh, man, those losses are always tough. And the ones where they really expose your weaknesses are the ones that really get to you and, uh you know, I'm like you with that, Coach. I think it's a it's a way to, you know, take it, you know, with one mindset. You know, you can take it as, you know, being mad or, you know, complaining that, you know, they didn't, you know, let up. Or, or you can take it as, you know, how can we get better during this, you know, so. Right. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. And so, yeah, I was... I was at a practice this morning at a school in Columbia. One of my former players is as assistant coach at one of the high schools in Columbia. They practice at 6.30 a.m., so I went by there before I came to work. And I'm in the gym watching those kids, and I say the same thing to a kid in there today. It's, you know, don't let one of these repetitions get away from you. You know, like, yeah, you just you wasted two reps in this drill. You're going to do this drill every day. You're going to practice 70, 80 times this year. You're going to let hundreds of chances to get better go go by the wayside because you're just not concentrating. Yep. You know, it's something that anybody can do. And yep. so um, it doesn't mean enough to them, you know. And yeah. Yeah, they, 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 and they're young, and they don't see the, the big picture yet. That's, nope. that's what the problem nope. is a lot of times. No, nope. it's, uh, you know, it's a me world, and, you know, I think our society's turned that way, and, you know, unfortunately, these kids are babied, and you know, I was young and immature. I really feel like, you know, had I disciplined, you know, our teams at Zenith a little better, you know, I think we could have been tough. You know, little things of that nature. But I was young, and you know, as a coach, you just keep learning, man. And, you know, I learn every day. I watch, uh, I watch these NBA games every night, and you know of course college basketball starts this weekend that's going to be phenomenal and uh oh it's going to be man. i live I, I live about a mile from Missoula arena man i'm going to have front row to the michael porter show so i'm Ooh. i'm excited <laughs> yeah they um uh, they did good they got a good coach in there that's going to be able to recruit and keep the in state guys and man i think that's just huge because you get so much more support and you know if he's a stud man you got to do everything you can to keep him right there at home you know and that's right I, I think that coach will do well because, you know, strictly because he can flat out recruit and, you know, he'll have some good guys around him. I think, you know, I think they'll be really good this year. You know, he'll he'll have a really good first year. Kind of shifting gears here for just a minute. Mm-hmm. You and I sit around the table drinking sweet tea, talking a lot of basketball. Oh, yeah. And uh, t- tell the story. I love the story about your dad. Uh, you told me one time this story, and it just demonstrates how great a guy he is. Besides being a good coach, he's just a good man. Uh, tell the story about the time he, he took the guys to the hospital when they were complaining. I thought that was – that was we talk about coaching, and we're talking yeah. about coaching basketball, but we're also coaching people. And I thought that was just a great story. Oh, man, and, you know, that's the biggest thing about it, man, is, you know, you're you're trying to, you know, train and teach – teach these kids, you know, the game of life. But anyways, uh, 1998 or 99 season, um, it was Chico Fletcher and his crew. And uh, What a player. What oh, a player. Man. Five foot five from Osceola, Arkansas. He was, he was brilliant. But um, they had a week of practice. You know, the guys are pretty good. I think they started out like maybe – you know, five and two or something, six and two, you know, off to a pretty good start, lost to, you know, two money game teams. Uh, but they come out one week, I think on a Sunday, you know, they're moaning, you know, they're kind of whining, you know. Monday, it, it, it's not getting any better. There's, you know, negative energy, you know, guys, you know, slacking. Uh, Tuesday, you know, they're complaining, coach, man, again, you know, just little things of that nature. And uh, 
I think it was Tuesday or when it was either a Tuesday or a Wednesday after practice. He said, "All right, guys." Uh, he calls them in. You know, we're going to go on a field trip tomorrow. You know, these guys are like field trip. You know, I think Chico said, "Oh man, I hope we go to the zoo." You know, and uh, I think what one of the other guys, man, I wonder, wonder where he's taking us. You know, all fired up, thinking, you know, it's a field trip. You know, these guys are young guys still in college, and you know, they're getting all fired up. Well, they left, I think, at 8 a.m. the next morning, coach, and got on the bus, and I, I went with them. And, uh, man, it, it was unbelievable because, you know, my dad's quiet. He's quiet. And the guys are getting on the bus, you know, all excited, you know, in good spirits, you know, thinking they're going to, you know, I guess go to the zoo or something. Well, Little did they know, man, we showed up, you know, in Memphis, pulled into the uh, children's hospital over there, and, man, we, we went in there, and those guys, man, they, they got off that bus. They they were quiet, you know. Some of them were kind of mumbling some things, and we get inside the hospital, and we see the first mama who's, man, been in there with her sick daughter for seven years, you know, with cancer, mm. and, you know, just... That, that the girl's been in and out of a coma, and the mom just sat with her in there for seven straight years. You know, we walk to that room. The next room, you know, we go into a room, and, you know, this little kid, I think, had his, you know, he had a sickness with the amputation, and, man, poor guy, you know, he, he just looked at one of our guys and said, you know, if I could just be as tall as you, and play basketball like you, you know, just little things like, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And, I mean, you know, we're all, we all have, you know, goosebumps. Just just can't imagine, you know, just the magnitude of, you know, what people have to go through living with a family member, you know, that has to deal with that. And, you know, just room to room, children's just, I mean, sick and they've been in a, you know, bed for two or three straight years in that hospital, just, mm. you know, fighting every day. And, boy, we, we stayed there for about an hour. We signed some autographs, and or they did, and I'm saying me, but uh, I think I was eight years old, around 200. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> man, we, we uh, Coach, it was, it was an unbelievable experience that they got on that bus and, I mean, they you could hear a pin drop, and my dad looked back, and I remember him saying, he said, I don't want to hear any more complaining around me, and man, you, I mean, I don't think there was a word said the whole ride home, mm-hmm. and they went on that year to, you know, go to the NCAA tournament led by Chico Fletcher, and I mean, I think that was a game changer, because from that day forward, man, they 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 went to work, and, you know, that's what makes all that, you know, because, you know, in the big scheme of things, Coach, we love winning. You know, we hate to lose, you know, more than we like winning. But That's right. Coach, it's all about teaching those kids, man, and, you know, try to train, you know. Hey, it helps teach myself, you know. I mean, we all, nobody's perfect, you know. And, uh, man, it, you know, if we all as individuals try to better, you know, do better, become better people every day, you know, that's all you can ask for. And that's what you want to teach the the kids and even the college kids, you know. Unfortunately, you know, this is way off topic, but we send our college teams all the way to China to go play ball. you You know, you're putting these kids in a position, you know, they're still... 18, 19 years old, they can't, you know, be walking around a big city, you know, they've never, you know, unfamiliarity and, you know, be out there with no super, you know, they still don't have that, you know, maturity, you know, I think to, you know, be able to do all that, but that's way off topic, you know, just talking college. Yeah, ball. but no, I, I agree with you, you know, and, and that story, man, it, it just, it gives me goosebumps every time you tell it because... You know, it's kind of the whole point of my, my website, Just Win Today. And, you know, it's not about, you know, maybe winning and losing per se. Is it just trying to find the meaning? You know, don't miss the lesson, basically. You know, you could have, you could have just had the worst day of your life, 
But, you know, there's something today that happened that if you can hang on to that one thing and say, you know what, today was a bad day, but this one good thing happened, and I'm going to focus on that because that was the best part of my day. And so I'm going to take that with me, and I'm going to turn that into a win. Or saying, you know, uh, today it didn't go the way I wanted it to, but, you know, I learned the, the right way to do it now, and I'm going to apply that tomorrow. Well, then, you know what, today wasn't a loss. It was a win. And so, you know, it's it's uh, that's my whole mentality is it's not nobody goes undefeated in life. Nobody, you know, and I've had bad days. You've had them. We've all had them, you know, but yes, it's, it's, it's about trying to trying to take a step back and have some perspective. You know, how how good could you live your life if you could live it backwards and and go back and, and correct your mistakes? That's all of us. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, but it's kind of like, you know, we don't get to do it that way. So. The best thing we can do is try to find out what part of the day was a win and then take it with us tomorrow and try to do it again. You know, Absolutely, Coach. Absolutely. That's what it's about. That's, that's what it's all about, Coach. Yeah. And, uh, man, I think it's great, and it's, it's a positive message. Uh, you know, that just win the day, Coach. That's it's it. A, it's a positive vibe, and, man, I... I, I I look at you as a man, you know, an unbelievable coach and an unbelievable friend, man. You've always you've been good to me and uh you've been a good mentor and this is a positive vibe. So coach, uh man, more let's power do it again. to you and I, I appreciate you having me on, coach. Yeah, let's do it again. We we don't talk enough. I every time I talk to you I walk away feeling better. So, you know, talking to <laughs> coach, talking to you is a win. Let's do this again. Coach, I appreciate it, coach. <laughs> Have a good one, Coach. Stay in touch, buddy. Same to you. Yes, sir. Okay, bye-bye.